In this video, we're going to unpack an Zeus all-in-one computer. We're going to set it up with Windows. And when I do that, I'm going to show you a few of the little tricks and changes that I make whenever I set a computer up for a customer. So stick with me. We're going to open this up and we'll put it together and set it up. As you can see, we've taken everything out of the main box and that has left us with this white box. I'm not sure what's in there yet. And the unit. We also have the base for it. So we're going to put those together. Now we've opened up the box and taken everything out. We have a keyboard and a mouse, and then we have the screws and an Allen wrench to put the base on. That's the next thing we're going to do. We're going to put the base on, and this is how the base goes. It goes back behind here and fits in perfectly. Now we're going to put the screws in. I'm going to hold the plate in, and then I'll use my Allen wrench to put the screws in. Now that I have all five screws in, I'm going to go ahead and set the computer up. Next, I'm going to take the cover off and I'm going to get rid of that. I want to show you where some things are. If we look in the back, we'll see that we have an Ethernet port, two HDMI ports, the power port, and three USB ports also. On the left side, we have another USB port, a USB-C, and a speaker mic combination port. What we're going to do next is hook up the power and hook up the Ethernet for Internet. I'm plugging the power cord in and we're going to plug the ethernet cord. It's important to know about the ethernet cord, where it goes, because during the setup, we're going to wind up taking that out temporarily. You need to know where that is. Next, we have to get the transceiver out of the mouse because that's the only way the keyboard and the mouse are going to connect to the computer. There's a little slide switch on the bottom of the mouse, and we're going to use that to open it. Once we have it open, you can see there's the battery, and right over here is your little transceiver. We take that out, and that's what it looks like. Now we're going to plug it into the back of the computer into any one of the three USB ports. You can see now it's plugged in. Now we put our mouse back together and we're ready to go. I'm going to turn the unit around and face the camera and we're going to set it up. One of the things I did not show you is that on the side, that's where the power button is. This bottom button, we push that in for the power. As you can see, it's coming on now. I have my mouse on the left-hand side, by the way. A lot of people use it on the right. I actually can use it on either side. But for the sake of the camera, I'm going to use it on the left side. The setup starts and I pick English. I'm going to say yes. Hi there, I'm Cortana. Here's Cortana. She's talking to us, 
but I don't want her to talk to us. I'm going to click on the speaker and I'm going to mute her. I don't really need to listen to her. Now this is an all-in-one, by the way, that came with Windows 10. We're going to upgrade it to Windows 11 as we go along. But for the moment, let's continue through the setup. For this step, we're going to pick our region. In this case, I'm in the United States. I'm using the US keyboard. If I wanted to, I could add a second keyboard. I'm going to say no or skip, and now it's going to look for setup files. The computer is going to restart before we continue. When it comes back, we need to accept the license, which of course will say yes. At this point, it wants us to add an account. This is where they want you to sign in with a Microsoft account. But let's suppose that either you don't have a Microsoft account right now, you're not ready to set one up, or like in my case, I might be setting this computer up for someone else. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to reach around the back and unplug the Ethernet cord. Remember, that's what got me online. As you can see, I've unplugged the Ethernet cord. What I can do now is click back and it will let me put in a local account. O-W-N-E-R owner. I'm going to click next. It wants me to put a password in but I'm going to skip that for right now because I really don't want to put a password in especially during setup. I'll just click next. Here I need to accept the privacy settings. I could go through each of these and turn off what I don't want to accept. Still, generally speaking, I just accept them all. You can always go back later and unaccept any of the privacy settings. I'm going to say accept. Next, do I want to use Cortana? I'm going to say yes. The next screen asks me for my name, etc., for support and protection. But I'm not setting this up for me, so I'm going to skip that. I'm going to leave it blank and say next. On this screen, they want me to install McAfee and have me use that. But I don't want to use McAfee. I'm going to take the check mark out. Also, I'm not going to register the computer just now. I'm going to click next. All right, it's going to finish setting up Windows 10. But of course, we're going to wind up upgrading to Windows 11. It's bringing our profile up. I'm going to return the Ethernet cord to the Ethernet port. Remember, I took the Ethernet cord out so we could set up a local account instead of a Microsoft account. Now it's going to do some things it needs to do and we just have to be patient and wait for it. All right, now before we go any further, I'm going to show you a couple changes I make even before we upgrade this to 11. The first thing is I go down in the search and I search control panel. As you can see, I didn't even get all the words in and control panel is at the top. I click on that. Now control panel by default opens in category view. I'm going to hit this little drop down menu and I can change to either large or small icons, whichever suits. I'm going to say large because we're doing the video and I want you to see it. Where I want to go is power options. Here are the ASUS recommended settings. 
They have set it to put the computer to sleep after 30 minutes when it's not being used. I actually don't want the computer to sleep unless I tell it to sleep. So this is the drop down menu. I click on that. I'm going to go down to never. Now I have to save changes. One more change I make is up here. It says, choose what the power buttons do. I'm going to click on that and you can see that some things are grayed out at the bottom. I'm going to go up here where it says change settings that are currently unavailable. I click that and now I'm going to take the check mark out of turn on fast startup recommended. Once I take the check mark out, I click save changes. But before I save changes, you might wonder why I'm taking that out. And the reason is that if you leave it in, when you turn your computer off, it never actually is going off. It goes into kind of a deep hibernate and the memory or RAM never gets cleared completely when you do that. Over a period of time, a computer can slow down if the memory is not cleared. By taking this check mark out and clicking save changes, when I turn the computer off, then it's really off. So now I can exit out of that. One more thing we do here is put our calling card on machines we set up. This machine also comes with McAfee, which I never leave on. Thus, I'm going to copy my McAfee removal tool and I'm going to put our calling card installation file on the desktop. Now I can X out of that window and I'll show you what that looks like. I'm going to double click to install our calling card. It asks for permission. Here is our calling card, green and white. That's so someone can log into our remote technical support. If you're not familiar with that, there's a link down in the description. This is the support we offer. Most of our customers buy it for the year. That means they can come in as often as they want. They can come in for quarterly checkups. And even if the checkup takes an hour or an hour and a half or two hours, there's no extra charge for that. Our remote service also can be purchased just for a one-time repair of something on a computer. There's a link in the description to read more about our service and maybe even sign up if you like. What I'm going to do now is go to updates so that we can get Windows 11. I'm going to go to settings and I'm going to go to update and security. It tells us I'm missing important updates. I'm going to click so it checks for updates. As you see, there's a ton of updates. We're going to let it do all of those updates and then we'll keep checking updates. At some point, we're going to upgrade to Windows 11, and I'll show you that when it happens. The first round of updates has completed. Going back to Windows Update, we'll look for more. One update was found and we installed it, but I see there are optional updates. When I click through that, I find there's a BIOS or firmware update. I've selected the update and restarted the computer. Azus gives me the option to skip the update, but I want to go ahead. A little warning about BIOS updates. They cannot be interrupted. Make sure you have a battery backup for your desktop or all-in-one computers. You can't take a chance on losing power during this kind of update or your computer may never boot up again. Now that the computer is back from installing the BIOS update, we're going to get Windows 11. Oftentimes during setup, Windows will tell you the update is ready to install. However, for this computer, I need to go to the Windows 11 download page to get the update. 
Just in case you need it, I've added the link in the description below. Once downloaded, I'll run the installer, accept the terms, and let it install. This can take some time depending on your internet speed and other factors. Just be patient and don't interrupt it. There's a countdown at the end of the installation. In 30 minutes, the computer will reboot by itself and finish installing Windows 11. You can simply click Install Now instead of waiting. It will finish installing Windows 11. You can see it's coming back, getting some things ready for Windows 11. As soon as it's done, I'm going to bring us to our Windows 11 desktop. And there you have Windows 11. Now you might find this difficult to believe, but the first thing you need to do is go to settings in Windows 11 and look for updates. Even though we just installed Windows 11 fresh, look at all the updates that are now available. We're going to go ahead, download and install them. Once all these updates are done, what we would do is next install software for our customer if we were setting this up for someone who had just bought it. Whatever antivirus they want, by the way, we recommend Viper or Malwarebytes, and we have links for both of those in the description below. Whatever antivirus they want, we'll put in. And whatever else, Adobe Reader, Quicken or QuickBooks if we use them, Microsoft Office 365. In fact, we encourage our customers to get Microsoft 365. We set all that up for them. Finally, we would change from a local account to their Microsoft account. But for this computer right now, we're all done.